If you're an agency owner, entrepreneur, any type of business owner, and you're relying heavily on a niche, you're in danger of going broke. London, the UK is so different from the US, right? So, so, so different. Um, and especially in the way that we go about business development, the way that we go about getting clients. We had an ad campaign that was working in the US to bring in for B2B, okay? And this ad campaign was bringing us about 20 new inquiries for B2B services every single week. Ran the exact same ad campaign in the UK and it brought one inquiry in two months. Now, that just shows you that you have to tailor your style, tailor your pitches, tailor your business development to the people that you're working with. So tired. I'm feeling so flat today. Last night we went to the um, the Icons of Rugby golf tournament, which is really good. Like it was, the, it was the last day of the tournament. It was pretty fun, but uh, that went on to really, really late. And the South won, annoyingly. But it's all right because the North never forgets. <laughs> so essentially what we're doing today, we're gonna go meet over with one of the team, uh, Harry, Harry Jackson, and we're gonna go and sit down and talk to him about what their business goals are, their business objectives, uh, where they see social media and digital strategy fitting into that, and what we can do to help them. The common trend right now is as soon as an entrepreneur right, learns a little bit about anything, Facebook ads, YouTube ads, LinkedIn ads, anything digital strategy, right, or anything in general, and they know more than their client, they think at that point they can go out and start selling their services. And in many cases, that can work because if you know enough more than them that's going to help that client but the problem with that is is that you don't know enough to really take your business to the next level because when you're going to a client with a set of okay here's what i do you know i'm a facebook ads guy i'm a social media guy i'm a social media girl whatever you're going to a client you're like that's your hat you've got on then you're essentially prescribing a solution before you even know what the client wants and that is a, that's just not a very good um, position to be in because it limits your capability and it limits your potential everybody wants to quit their nine to five and be an agency owner or be a business owner and so they're just going into all these meetings saying I do this you need this well I don't know what they need you don't know what they need yet. you haven't even spoken to them so it's always very important that you have to diagnose the problem first before you can prescribe any kind of solution and the problem when you only know one set of techniques or one strategy is that if their solution doesn't fit your strategy or if your strategy doesn't isn't the solution they need then what do you do the danger at that point is that you try to start trying to mold their situation to fit your situation which isn't the best thing for the client the best thing for the client is whatever they need to get the job done which means you have to have a comprehensive knowledge of all the potentials and if you don't have a comprehensive knowledge of all the potentials you know you're basically leaving yourself um in a position where you aren't going to be earning your full potential it's so much harder trying to try and tell cab drivers where to go here as in you haven't got a grid system in there then. yeah so easy just like hey go two blocks that way <laughs> stop it after the next block now i'm like okay the second street meet me south of this west of that there's not a lot of big brands there's not a lot of the big companies who had a lot of prestige and had the name before really taking advantage of digital right now and so that leaves a massive opportunity for innovative, creative, smaller brands to just, to, you know, take a significant amount of the market share from some of the bigger brands. Yeah, let me nice yeah. yeah, really nice to meet you. If they can concentrate on those two areas alone, yeah. they'll get that number up very quickly. And I think a lot of mistakes are made when owners, whether you're pitching to raise money, whether you're pitching new business ideas, whether you're pitching a new client, they go into there with the mindset, um, it's a very needy mindset, right? Like we need this deal, or we need to raise this money, or we need that investment. But don't go into that meeting carrying that, because that neediness comes across to your client, comes across to the investor, comes across to the potential partner or supplier that you're pitching. When that neediness comes across, yeah, that kills the deal. See, and a lot of the time I've been in meetings where clients, they just can't see what's in front of them. The problem is though, is it's, you can't convince 
a business owner of something that they don't want to learn. They have to come to that conclusion themselves that, hey, this is different. So as your job, your job is really just to kind of show them the potential of what they're missing out on. And hopefully they will come to that conclusion themselves. But you can't say you need to do this because at the end of the day, he's a business owner. She's a business owner. They've had some, some success. People generally don't think they need help with their businesses until it's too late. Yo, you, you, you sneaking in some company secrets here? Listen, you probably can't even read it anyway. <laughs> There's only really five questions I ask every client. And those five questions are essentially to establish what problem they have, how much that problem is costing them, or how much, you know, the effect that problem's having in their business. And then after we've established that, you know, how, you know, how they have tried to solve that problem, and then what we can do to, to solve it and move on from there. Obviously, there's a little bit more than that, but I'm not letting you in my company secrets just yet. But again, the point is, I go into every client meeting with this thing and it allows me to make notes and allows me to make sure I understand exactly what their problem is and how I'm going to go about solving it. Alright, well we can't film in there, so I'm just going to go in, take this meeting and I'm going to talk to you when I come back. Right, so just got done with that strategy meeting. Um, yeah, it was all good. You know, it was a very interesting client, not something we've done before. But I guess what was really, really key and really important to this one was um, really trying to understand what they want. You know, I've said that many, many times. Understanding what's important to the client is the most, you know, is like critical, the number one objective. And with them, you know, they already have a team. They've tried a bunch of different things, but what they need is strategy. So we really talked about what they're working on, what they're missing, and what they need to go about implementing it. So now at this point, uh, it's just you know waiting for them to pull the trigger, and that's it. You know, they pull the trigger, and we get another client. There's you know nothing I like better than helping teams execute strategy. Every now and again, you've got I've got to, you know do it for them and have my own team, but. I love working on business strategy, that's my favorite thing in the world. So clients like this are a breeze, man. I love that type of clients. They've got a team, they're ready to go, they've got a budget, they just need someone to tell them how to do it. And I'm like, okay, I'm your man. Right, so we're off to a pitch. Well, today's actually not really a pitch. It's more of a advisory role. There's a business that's moving over to the States, they're expanding into the United States, and you know they've, they've uh, sought me out to help give them strategic advice on how to do that, and how to essentially you know, transition their business over there. Obviously, I've had a business in the United States for oh, 10 years now, um, and so for British companies moving to the United States, especially since I've done it before, uh, there's some challenges, there's some uh, obstacles, there's some things to be aware of, and they want to sit me down and, uh, get my thoughts. It was interesting to see how they do things because it was slightly different and we chopped it up a little bit. You know, I gave them some tips and techniques and strategies and ideas of how we do things in business development and how they do things is very different. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to adopt some of his strategies and just from the feedback I was getting, they're going to adopt some of our strategies. But I think it's a start of a good relationship. You know, I like that guy, um, both ex-rugby players, which obviously is great. Um, you know, we could be bonded on that a little bit. Uh, but yeah, it was a great meeting. If you're an agency owner, entrepreneur, any type of business owner, and you're relying heavily on a niche, you're in danger of going broke. Here's when niching works. If you have an online funnel, okay, and you're using that online funnel to drive leads to your business, then niching can work in that scenario because what you're doing is you have a group of people with a specific problem and you are speaking about a problem to a group of people. Great. That is the only time that niching works. The wider environment of business and the wider landscape of what takes what it takes to make a business objective um, successful, that's what's going to help you in these client meetings. That's what's going to help you land clients. The big money, the times when clients are going to pay you big money is when you are able to do everything that they need. Now, granted, you might go into that meeting with one thing that you try and get your foot through the door. For example, our guess our core focus is digital strategy for premium services, high ticket services and luxury brands. And a lot of that revolves around growing their revenue using social media um, and digital marketing. Now we went into a meeting for a client and they said, hey, come in and talk to us about social media. Okay, come in and talk to us about how we can grow our revenue with social media. Now, yes, we use social media to grow their revenue, but 
our goal is to grow the revenue. And if all we, if all I knew how to do was social media, I would not have seen that five minutes into the meeting, they brought up something like their business that would grow their revenue if they changed it 10 times quicker than anything social media could. But if all I knew how to do was social media, I would have ignored that piece of information they gave, let, gone on through the conversation and said, okay, great. Here's our social media plan for you. Here's how you grow in a business. Don't even worry about social media yet. This is the biggest leave in your business. Now, to do that, you've got to dedicate yourself to mastering your craft. And not just mastering one area of your craft, mastering all of your craft. Yeah, sure, you can be a specialist and you can have your specialist area, but you need to know how that fits into everything so that when you get there in a meeting, you can say, oh, okay, yeah. I must, you know, we know how to do social media, or we know how to do uh, SEO, or we know how to do design, or we know how to do um, Facebook, or whatever it is. But businesses tend to have more problems than just what's in front of them. You're not there to sell your services. You're there to solve problems. And when a business owner says, okay, here's my problem, if you only know how to solve one problem, you miss out on so much potential business. So go back to what I said at the very, very beginning. You know, I know some people are gonna find that controversial, but it's the honest truth, man. If you really wanna make good money, and if you really wanna be in this for the long term, you have gotta stop relying on a niche. You can service a niche set of businesses, but stop relying on having niche knowledge. Like, really dedicate yourself to mastery and dedicate yourself to knowing as much about your industry and being an absolute rock star who's an expert in that field and knowing everything so that when the client says, hey, I've got this problem, yeah, it might not have been the exact thing that you thought you were going in to talk about, but if you can solve their problem, if you can articulate their problem back to them and you can solve that in a way that they understand and they trust you, you get the client.